Hey everybody, welcome to an all new Geek Table Talk, episode 12, 12, 12, 12, a baker's dozen, which is actually 13, so I'll just say that again on episode 13. I am one of your hosts, Anthony Sterling, aka your friendly neighborhood super negro, and joining me as always are my fellow co-hosts, Mr. David Welte, hello good sir, and Mr. Christopher I am a Saints fan till the death, McNabb. Yeah. What's up, fellas? How's it going? Going great. We sight. We pumped. We yep. doing it. We ready. It's preseason, baby. <laughs> Woo! Just do. It's preseason season. <laughs> all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, it. you know Geek Table Talk is your place for all things geek, nerd, and blurred culture. Um, and as usual. We are sponsored by absolutely no one. So that keeps us honest. Uh, but if you do want to sponsor us, hey, you know what to do. You can reach me at heyyoant77 at gmail.com. That is hey, H-E-Y, yo, Y-O, and come on, everybody, A-N-T at gmail.com. So you could just get at me and say, hey, your show is awesome. You three guys are ruggedly handsome. You're very nerdy and you know your shit. We want to sponsor you. But keep in mind, by sponsoring us does not mean you own us. So if you are letting us sponsor your by products, if your product sucks, we still say it's actually cool. So you can make your money and we can get money. <laughs> so our souls are for sale. Suplex City. No, just kidding. <laughs> And as usual, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. It'll only take a second. Blue thumbs up. Blue thumbs are always cool, and it helps with the algorithm or algorithm, depending on where you're from. And please hit that bell and turn your notifications to all so you'll be notified when we drop the next episode of Geek Table Talk, movie reviews, gameplay uh, videos, game reviews, which I need to get on the ball because... We are getting in the fall season, which means there are a lot of video games coming. So I will be playing a hell of a lot of them, as well as my friends here, because uh, we are we are really uh, the squad for Back for Blood. But we will oh, get we to that. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Um, also, you can pretty much follow me if you like me. Follow me on Twitter at Madness A D No. At madness3030. That is on both Instagram and Twitter. Okay. So you can follow me there. Now, Madness AD is where I live on Twitch. I am a certified Twitch bitch. I don't care. And yes, hashtag Twitch got to do better. But I also play games and uh, stream on Twitch. You can always come and uh, hang out and have fun. I think we, I have fun. I hope everyone who's been watching has fun. See it. It's cool. Thank you, David. It's good. McNabb come on doesn't, out. He doesn't believe in that. He doesn't believe in Twitch or books. Hey, so, I was there. Yes, you were. You were. He, <laughs> <laughs> he was there giving me hell on earth. So <laughs> definitely check me out on Twitch. And um, like I said, if you sponsor me, not only would you, well, not just me, excuse me. If you sponsor the YouTube channel, you also can sponsor the Twitch channel. Hmm. And it helps us Friendship. get better equipment. Um, it'll help us get some games. Uh, it'll also help me pay these goddamn bills. So, because <laughs> I got to pay for internet, y'all. Can't do this without the web. Actually, I could. I could just use my jobs internet and just do everything but i won't do that because i want everything from us this is our thing and we're gonna have fun with it so with that being said want to thank you we have not forgotten i no let me not lie i forgot to uh do the drawing i didn't get all the names together so episode 13 the baker's dozen will be the episode we announced the $50 gift certificate winner, because why? We reached the halfway point on the road to, to 1,000. I know I want to say 10,000, but we reached 500 subscribers. So I just want to have a way of saying thank you. And when I say thank you, I have a gift. So 
All you have to do is leave a comment on this video or any of the TSWN videos that are on YouTube, Geek Table Talk, movie reviews, gameplay uh, videos, or Let's Plays, and game reviews. Leave a comment, automatically um, puts you in the running for a $50 prize. <sighs> the $50 Baker's Dozen Extreme Prize Stravaganza. Ganza, <laughs> Ganza, Ganza. Okay, I mean, yeah, we, yeah, we'll, I think we'll come up with a cooler name, maybe. I yeah, know. you know, but and, and we should have echo, we should add an echo to it. Echo, right? echo, echo, <laughs> but I'm not feeling the tech right now. <laughs> so, yeah, um, just leave a comment on any of the videos. It can be a nice comment, it could be a lewd comment. And if you feel like you want to be rude because you know you have nothing better else to do with your life, um, that'll put you in the running, but at the same time, you <laughs> might not win shit. So Heed my warning. You want to win? Be cool. That's all we ask. Just be cool. All right. Now that we are done with that, uh, bum, 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 bum. it's time for viewer comments. Ladies and, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he has returned. A true champion always comes back to prove why he or she is the champ and i think at this moment this is where his he or she's theme song will start to play and since i know this person it is definitely a he so boom 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the champ is here, the Woo. king of all commenters, the eclectic blurred, just decides once again to come from on the mountain high and bless us with a lightning bolt of comments. So ladies and gentlemen, viewer commentary begins now. Woo. Okay, I don't know if I sound like Ric Flair or a ghost. Are going good. through a window. <laughs> it's a little drafty in here. It's a little chill. There's some good, 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 good ghosts. All right. So the champ, Eclectic Blurred, says, Hey, y'all, another great show in the books. So, he, so here we go on my comments. And he spells go the Cajun way, G E A U X. And I believe he went to LSU. I'm not going to hold that against him, but he went to LSU. <laughs> He'll, he'll correct me. I know he's going to come back at me. Um, he's a fighting tiger. So, number one, first time I fast forward through a segment since I haven't seen Black Widow. I know I got to see it. Now, it's okay. It's okay, Collective Blurred. We're not mad at you. We did say we had spoilers, so it's cool. Uh, I believe all three of us liked and enjoyed yeah. Black Widow, correct? Okay, my only Jeez. thing now, re going back and rethink about it, I really would have loved to see Natasha and um, Yelena actually fight the Black Widows in the Red Room. And it wasn't all sisterly love. We have to free right. them. No, we fucking them up fast. <laughs> I, I, I just we, want to- We have to them. beat them, then free them. Exactly. <laughs> Whoop they ass, then give them a pass. So I, that was the only thing. I still say um, Draco was kind of blah, but- his motors were actually pretty cool and really smart. So if you haven't seen Black Widow, um, hey, take a chance. I do believe it's out of the theaters now and it should be on Disney Plus soon for whatever um, the regular um, subscription price is. You won't have to pay 30 bucks. So just give it time and you'll be able to watch it in your home for free and eat popcorn. All right. Number two, I really enjoyed Loki. My favorite character was a toss-up between Mobius and He Who Remains. Agreed. Agreed. You know the only, the only character that didn't get the love they truly deserved? Miss Minutes. Miss, mm. Mi Miss Minutes is the best horror character I've ever seen in my life. Hey, Miss Minutes, man. It's, it's creepy. You know, especially like when they got to the, in the castle and she just pops up. And I'm like, oh my God, if they didn't piss their pants, something's wrong. Oh, what's this little cartoon book? <laughs> <laughs> what is this Roger Rabbit reject doing? What the hell? 
Oh, yeah, like Loki she's pulling the strings. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> she might be. She might be. I, I still say Miss Minutes is probably the main puppet master in this whole game. <laughs> you know, did you expect me to let a black man run things? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, much love to Tara Strong, whose voice is just so amazing. So watch Loki, people. Watch What If as well. All right. Number three, the commenter continues. I, too, am loving the MCU TV shows, all for different reasons. But I think WandaVision is my favorite. But I'm biased since Wanda was my favorite character in the MCU since her introduction. Not mad. You can be biased. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, my favorite MCU character really is Miss Minutes. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> my character is not going to get the true love that he deserves or the representation that it he needs to have, and that's the Hulk. So um, Captain America is like my, yeah, I would say Captain America really is my favorite MCU character because he had the most complete trilogy you know, like a true, beautifully crafted trilogy. So, um, story art. Yeah, great story mm -hmm. art. You know, Hulk was kind of like, oh, uh, well, you know, if you put the Hulk in, it, it's Hulk practical. stuck in weird rights battle. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Universal won't let Hulk make money. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm just like, yay, you know, thumbs up. But, it is okay to love Wanda. Many think she's a terrorist. Many think she's a bad guy. But hey, sometimes the villain needs love too. Number four, can't wait for what if. Well, since we recorded <laughs> after the premiere of what if, hopefully Eclectic Blurred, you're, you've watched the first episode and I was highly impressed. Everyone knows I'm not a, I wasn't a big fan of the animation, but watching it for that first episode, Way to go, Marvel. Way to go. I love the aesthetic. I love the look. It really did feel like an old 1940s World War II cartoon. You know, it, it really felt Fleischer it was cool. Brothers. It felt it, like the Fleischer Brothers animation. You know, if you don't know who... That they were going to do it like on the, the release schedule. Yeah, because Iron Man would have been first. Right. You know, so I love that they kind of did it on the actual chronology. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, if you go back and you watch um, the Marvel movies in the way it's kind of supposed to be, Captain America would be first. But then once Eternals come out, then Eternals will be the first movie because right. it comes it, it takes place 10 to 20,000 years before modern MCU. So, man, this is so Star Wars. Watch this. Then watch Toy this. Me, why me? Yeah, you know, where's the good doctor? Where's Doctor Who when you need when you need him? Or her or it, because you never know what he'll just what it will, you know, regenerate into. Now, number five. Ooh, I might have to drink some water because ah, ASMR kids. Here we go. In my Ric Flair voice, I am not going to try this because my throat will burn. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you may not like my comments, but you will learn to live with it. <laughs> Woo! In order to be the commenter, that's what I was trying to say last week. <laughs> you have to beat the commenter. Woo! What, okay, that was horrible. That, that just sounded like an old Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! There you go. You know, and like hey, right. first, first woo was good. Second one was, uh, well, you were losing some steam there. You know? Yeah, you know, it was kind of like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> that, that was that was Rick's. I'm going about to go to bed. Woo. Yeah, woo. it's like it's five p.m. <laughs> well, we all know Rick Flair does not see that man. <laughs> that man gone close to seventy, and that dude runs twenty four seven. So, I have I have not the stamina of the great Rick Flair. Now, number six. He gave a six this time. He he is holding that damn championship. Ain't nobody coming after it. <laughs> Seriously, so happy for y'all that the channel is growing. Keep pushing forward. Eclectic Blurred, it is because of people like you. We do this and the motivation that you give us 
con- makes us go forward and not stopping uh unless i win the lottery or the powerball <laughs> Uh, this shit is gonna happen for a while, <laughs> and uh, even well, if I do, say, you win, and then, then it gets then bigger. it gets better. Yeah. It's gonna be bigger. I'm buying a all fucking of, station. All of a sudden, the studio's gotten crazy. All yeah, you effects. know, everybody, everybody gets something. Dave and Chris get brand new um places with we did it with their own it. little man caves to shoot in. I want a Marvel I, intro, huh? <laughs> I want a Marvel like intro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting sued. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll come up with our own music, but you know, well, you, you yeah. get the idea. Dave plays the guitar. So um, we'll have our own little uh, jingle, but no, um, I'm going to continue this. Uh, this was, as I've said before, this was the therapy of the Rona to get through the Rona. And now I am just kind of like, um, I'm like Tyrone on Chappelle's show. Hey man, you got any more of those geek tables? <laughs> you know, you got some nerd news. I any any more Twitch for me? Oh, <laughs> you know, I, I, but you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do no. I'm not eating dog food, <laughs> but you know, I really appreciate it, and I hope you gentlemen appreciate it as well. I don't. I'm at the point now. I'm, I'm not about the, the numbers. I just enjoy doing this, and having you guys on makes it even better and having people watch it and comment makes it even better than better than best. So that makes no sense, but damn it in my mind, in my mouth, it does. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eclectic blurred. I do this. I'm going to do the prayer hands. I need a I need a Burger King crown, man. Crown the king. <laughs> yeah, we got to crown the king. Eclectic blurred, you get the crown. You deserve it. Thank you once again. And we continue on to another commenter who is who is always watching us, always there. Jason, what's up, Jason? Now Jason's trying to get that crown because he's like, I got two things to say. So here we go. Jason, you shot four, but I won't hold it against you. One, have you guys heard anything about a Predator origin story, a movie called Skull that's in production? Any insight would be very much appreciated. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't uh, because I have been paying more attention to that alien video game (laughs) that's coming that I kind of think is like Outriders meets um, Alien. Uh, It's a team squad game that's coming, but for Predator, no, I have not. Have you guys heard anything about it? Haven't really been film? like apparently, apparently coming next year. Mm-hmm. But other than that, and I just looked too, just just you know to cheat as well. And I was like, man, I still nothing else besides that. Okay, like still just a vague kind of pre production twenty twenty two. Okay, nothing else that I can see at the moment. Gotcha. Yeah, you see, so I've heard of it though. No, like. Yeah. Uh, this was announced a little while back, but mm-hmm. pff, nothing. I've always said Predator 1, Predator 2. That's all you need. Uh, no need to watch one. other movies. Isn't huh? Predator supposed to be pretty good? That last one? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't read, seen I've movies. watched it, and then I just went, it's com- somewhat forgettable. <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm kind of a purist. I'm, I'm not, you know, Gamergate style purist. Right. But... um. <clears throat> Once they did Alien vs. Predator, which was one of my favorite comic book series, I was kind of like, okay, y'all, y'all bastardizing it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm so done. So I, I, I stick to the originals. I watched the, the first, well, Alien 1, 2, 3, and Resurrection, even though that wasn't the best one, but it was fun. And I watched Predator 1 and Predator 2. And the other ones, if they're on TBS or on uh, AOC, I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll just watch it for free. I don't care. You know, it, it does not move me. It's it's just background noise. All right. And his second comment. What's this about the MCU tossing around the idea of a timeline where Kang kills the Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, upset about that. Well, <laughs> Whoa. very upset about that one. Yes. <laughs> Jason, you have upset the dogs. 
<laughs> they literally oh. like release us. And the the, the, the no. Corgi no like. <laughs> the Corgi's like, are you fucking playing? <laughs> no. <laughs> Black Widow just got her show and you killed her. <laughs> um, to be honest, I'm not surprised because there are going to be time. We are now in post Loki. So we have the multiverse. So of course there is going to be a timeline where the Avengers become evil. The Avengers don't form. The Avengers get slaughtered possibly by Kang. Um, the Avengers uh, become owned by DC and they make horrible movies. <laughs> There Hello. are m- multiple versions of the Avengers we are probably going to see. And I would love to see the new Avengers that had, um, was it new Avengers that had Luke Cage and um, Spider-Man and all the other characters. Like they just formed a brand new version of the Avengers. And I think Captain Marvel was the head of it, but I'd also love to see the ultimates, you know, whether they do the ultimate version of the Avengers from the ultimate universe, that was kind of like fairly sick where Tony Stark had to stay in the suit in order to survive. Cause he, I think he had like a techno virus or something. I got to go back and read it or give me the ultimates with um, Miss America Chavez spectrum, you know, AKA Monica Rambeau who made her appearance in her first appearance in MCU and um, WandaVision. Uh, who else was in it? Blue Marvel, Captain Marvel. Give me that one and I'll be a happy camper. You know, so yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's um it's not going to happen because why would you start a multiverse and not have different versions of your main super team? You know, and especially if you get one where Kang actually killed them, show me that one. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see that one. Because Kang buzzed their ass plenty of times. I was saying, I could see it happening now with, I mean, like you said, with how we got everything kind of busted open with Loki. We got the multiverse of right. madness and all that. I mean, good quantum media. <laughs> they got the multiverse. They got the X-Men they got to bring in, the Fantastic yep. Four. So, I mean, I can see it, like, coming. Yeah, because um, I know the rumor from, you know, a lot of, chit chat about what's going on with um marvel with marvel studios is that phase five is all fantastic four like phase five is the birth of fantastic four and it's going to have this kind of um interconnectivity as well as this trickle down effect into everything you know so could we see in loki season two a little bit of reed richards you know, because the TVA, they went after the Fantastic Four for messing up the timeline, you know, in the comics. They were like, um, your ass is under arrest. Come with us. And, you know, Reed's like, uh, I'm the smartest man in this goddamn galaxy. No. <laughs> you know, so it, it it could be where we'll have we'll have all those different versions. And I, I can't wait to see it because I really want to see the Fox version of the Fantastic Four fight the mcu version of the fantastic four <laughs> that would be hilariously amazing which fox version though chris evans yeah or... i was about to say <laughs> oh so oh no no not chris evans because well maybe it'd be fun to see chris evans come back but i want i want that other version <laughs> that poor michael b jordan what the hell were they thinking about version Killmonger, you're, you're back yeah, yeah. you know Killmonger? What? no my name's johnny storm yeah no <laughs> <laughs> you know where the thing ran around naked <laughs> you know that's the version i want to see him fight and literally crush that's why they call him the thing <laughs> oh <laughs> swang in <laughs> <laughs> oh and he left us with a side note i'm looking to be <laughs> okay i love this i'm looking to be second place commenter us losers need a win too. You're never a loser, Jason. You're always a winner in our hearts. Hey. Get you another Burger King crown. Yeah, we get more you than one. one. We'll, we'll, title. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. the IC belt. <laughs> That's always the step before you get to the big championship. <laughs> or if you were in WCW, it would be uh, the US title. Nice. So, see, 
You're never a loser on Geek Table Talk. Everyone's a winner. We even have television titles. <laughs> <laughs> you defend them on television every we week. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on. Thank you, Jason. Once again, thank you. Uh, moving on. This one comes from I Just Want to Sleep Peacefully. Wow. <laughs> That's a name. I feel and, it. <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. Damper. But I love the name. <laughs> and they say congrats on 500. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully I'll find some applause and just put 500, 500. Like a Jet Set Radio when you used to do oh, the yeah. graffiti and every move would have. Beep, 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 beep. So no, thank you, thank you. Yes, we I man, look, it's a road we're traveling, and to get to 500, I'm I'm very excited for that. Um, but also we want to get the view, the views, not the views, the views, not like Drake. We're not gonna sit on the spate on the needle in uh Toronto and think about a stripper who broke our heart. We want the views. We got to get to 1,000 subscribers with 4,000 views so then we can monetize these bad boys so we can get a little bit of income coming in. And it's not just for the money. We just want to build a really cool community that will comment and we can talk back to them. And when we go live one day, they will follow us and we will say some sick stuff and hopefully it'll never come back to bite us in the ass when we become famous. <laughs> cancel culture so thank you i just want to sleep peacefully and i hope that you get the chance to do just that last comment comes from aj riot 17 the cruiserweight champion that's what we'll give him uh i just want to sleep peacefully is our uh tv title holder AJ Riot 17, you now have the cruiserweight title, junior heavyweight, if you really want to feel like you're someone. AJ says, according to Kevin Hart, the rock's forehead <laughs> is <laughs> real. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to refute that because one day we'll hopefully meet the rock and I don't want to do this to his forehead and tap it. Um, we're not going to do that. And we're going to respect it because we might want to be friends with The Rock. Mr. Yeah. Dwayne, can I? <laughs> <laughs> maybe Dwayne, maybe The Rock's forehead is like the head on, y'all remember the cartoon, um, the animated series, uh, The Head? <laughs> MTV's The Head? Oh, yeah, I do, that? yeah. Maybe he has an alien living in it. That's why he's so successful. Hmm. Let's think about that for a little while. Think about that. Huh. All right, and uh, let's see. He uh, he says, also, I remember my dad telling me the Texas Cyclone gave more concussions than the NFL. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> that is I mean, true. I, I, he's probably not lying at no, all. No, there is your no dad lie. Was, your dad was wise. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the Cyclone give the concussions? <laughs> that is my Will Smith, uh, Will Smith concussion. Um, no, that didn't work. I it's think probably, I'm gonna find a scene where he does say that the concussions. <laughs> There's probably so many people that rode the Texas Sky Cyclone and don't realize they did it because they're concussed. Oh yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Wait, maybe, you sure I was on that ride? <laughs> maybe know. that's why it was broken all the time because the folks who were the repair people rode it one time and just completely forgot to go back and fix it <laughs> because of the concussions. That roller coaster was dangerous. I'm just gonna call it like. It was old. It was made of wood. <laughs> it was definitely a final destination scene waiting to be made. I want to say it was Texas's fastest uh, roller coaster too, wasn't it? That's a thought, record or something like that. I think so. You know, but I do remember that Accelerate. If y'all remember Accelerate, that was supposed to be the fast roller coaster. And then I rode it, and I was doing all the woo. And my friend who was sitting next to me, she was like, calm down. It's not that damn fast. <laughs> and I was like, well, woo. <laughs> you know, so. Ultra Twister. <laughs> yeah. Batman. <laughs> my ride, I'm not going to lie. And one day, you know what? In the comments, 
let's let's start that. Let's see if people are actually going to watch and do it. In the comments, name your favorite roller coaster you've ridden as a kid, as an adult. What is your favorite ride? Because I will tell you my favorite. I have two. Space Mountain. Because when you get to that eight, you get all the way up and it looks pitch black. They tell you never put your arms up because you can lose your arms on the grading. Um, and it, y'all remember Excalibur? Yeah. yeah. That was my favorite ride at Astro World. I remember Excalibur. that. Because that roller coaster worked. That and Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning. Grease <laughs> Lightning was just, that, too. that was the one that used to. Yeah. yeah. You know. Those are, I'll say, okay, those are my one, two, three. Yeah, my three favorite. So, Dave, favorite roller coaster? Ooh. Um, you know what, man? I, 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 you said it already, but I'm going to go with it. You know, the Space Mountain, man, it's a classic. It's dark. You know, you you don't know what's going on. You, you twist turns. <laughs> We're doing it. Chris? I want to say the Batman. Was it the Batman at Astroworld? The Batman or Superman? One of them. I forget. I forget what they those. had both. Was that was that your Batman? The legs hanging one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they was they say you also had what? You, you also had was that a uh, Mister Freeze? Was it? You know where you're yeah. you're going through the coaster and then all of a sudden you're way up high and you're doing yeah. backwards. Yeah. Damn. See, I remember a Superman ride. I don't know if it was in. Uh, at Astro World or at a uh, great adventure in Jersey, but the Superman ride, you actually were horizontal. Ah, like laying it and everything. Like, no, you, you, wow. yeah, you know, it was like, like, it starts off like this and then it starts to go up. And then when it hits, it goes horizontal and then it's just gone. And I was just like, I'm not riding it <laughs> at the time. Way too fat. No, I'm not riding it. So <laughs> it and looked really cool. I it really did look cool. Twister, but the first time that thing twist, my head hit the side of the button, the, the railing. Oh, yeah. I was Ouch. Like, this right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have rode the Texas Cyclone. <laughs> yeah. I know I did. Mom, dad, I did. No, son, no, no. You hit your head on the railing of another ride. You lie. That's all you do is lie. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everyone who dropped the comment. Really appreciate it. As usual, put it at the bottom. You can be a winner if you do. And um, definitely, that's our topic, along with the other topics we talk. Let us know your favorite roller coaster um, that you've ridden. And um, please, no, no. If it's one of those, I wrote it with my girlfriend, little Susie Rottencrotch, and we, <laughs> you know, fine you could give us your whole little story we'll enjoy it you'll sound like mom from back for blood and we'll just go ew so leave us a comment and now we shall move on to the geek table talk proper news and conversation all the news that you can use that won't give you the blues and ladies and gentlemen well this one might give certain fans the blues because it damn sure tried to give Disney the blues because little Miss Scarlett Johansson decided enough was enough. You're not going to play me nor my money. I want my bag, so I shall sue. She has gone rogue. As if Disney didn't teach her already, we can throw you off a damn cliff if we have to. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson decided, wait a minute, you broke trust because Disney decided... Yes, Black Widow finally did hit theaters. They kept that promise. But the promise they forgot to keep was the exclusivity of that release because Disney decided to go and say, hmm, we can make a bank if we put it on Disney Plus Premier Access. And they did. So to the people who paid 30 bucks, I'm glad you enjoyed it. To the folks who risked the Rona, who went to the theaters, I hope you enjoyed it because we Sorry. were, we did, we went to the theaters and it was basically, I would rather pay $12 than 30 And Scarlett was like, uh-uh, nay no, you owe me some, um, some coin because her people went and filed a lawsuit on Disney stating that Disney 
reneged on a promise that was put in writing in the contract. Disney comes back and says, huh? hold on there, bitch. We don't play these games. Oh. I've killed. I've killed. No, um, seriously, uh, Disney came back and said, oh, wait a minute. We had no such promise. And not this to me was a little messed up on was no not a little was truly messed up on disney's part because disney started to blame that miss johansson did not care about the pandemic and was more concerned about theatrical release than the safety of viewers but then i say to you disney you also didn't care about the pandemic because you released it in theaters so you're you're a dick you're a dick and most importantly disney you're a dick now they also played a move where we gave her 20 million dollars they came back once um uh johansson's people came with the uh riot act and they were like well we're gonna control the narrative and said that we paid her 20 million Plus, we also gave her an option to get into the streaming rights. And this is where things kind of get out of hand, because once it goes in court, if it goes in court. All of it has to be proven by Scarlett Johansson and her people. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have to prove that that contract stated that that movie, that Black Widow was coming into was going to be released in theaters only for so much time you know now the only part is what they are really kind of focusing on i would look more into well the time period of theatrical release would be a much more um bigger save than just um theatrical release only because okay we didn't do the theatrical release only but we did release it so we did our part but if you're saying, okay, we're going to keep it in theaters for 45 days. And it'll stay in the theater for 45 days. Then we'll put it on, you know, our streaming service. You've kind of had a battle. You actually had a fight with that, you know, and I'm not a lawyer. So this is just my take on it. But once again, I say pay everybody equally. I'm, 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 I guess I'm a socialist when it comes to things like this. Uh, but the fact that they went and threw out, we paid her 20 million, I think was kind of messed up, you know, I, I, on, on my part, when they came out with their press release, all you had to say was Ms. Johansson was paid. We gave her an option to jump on this. We have to take care of our bottom line. So be it. You know, you didn't have to get into the whole, she doesn't care about the people in the pandemic or, hey, we gave her $20 million, blah, blah, blah. Because what that brings is the, well, well, she got paid $20 million. She should shut up. You know, that's not cool. That doesn't make any sense because contracts are contracts are contracts. Unless you live in Louisiana where contracts don't mean shit. <laughs> this, this is the wild west. Oh, shit. yeah. You go for broke. You know, well, we signed you to a contract. You can't go to another TV station. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a lawyer. Oh, shit. Lawyer. Oh, so, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, daddy. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's a weird one because, you know, the rumor mill is saying now Kevin Feige is jumping into it and Kevin Feige is not happy with the way Disney is handling it. And let's just be honest, Disney, Kevin Feige is your golden goose right now. You got to keep him happy. And the fact that they're chopping off long, long-term contracts is also telling, you know, because Robert Downey Jr., he was, make, he was making bank, you know, but he sacrificed his initial pay to come in on the back end, which was the the great deal you know mm -hmm. and once people saw it they were like well i want a robert downey jr contract mm -hmm. you know and it looks like scarlett johansson and her people were going in the same route and then disney was like mm, nope not happening we did this deal you signed this deal this is what it is so if it goes to court 
um, all the contract stuff is going to become public knowledge. And then we'll see. And if the exclusivity was not in there, then I kind of say, well, what's the deal, Scarlett? You know, what, what, what were you going for? What was your in, <laughs> end game? <laughs> you died in that. Um, we also pulled her off the Tower of Terror, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, well, she's producing the movie. They canceled all her projects with Disney, I think. Yeah. And they killed an episode of What If, which I, I don't think it was her episodes. I don't think they did because if they did that, then they would have had to take out um, the Iron Man episode um, right. or, you know, just completely take out Black Widow out of it. But she's still in the promotions, you also, know, and I, yeah. and I do believe she came back to do voice work. So, mm -hmm. you know, this this one, this one came out of left field, but didn't because that was one of the reasons Black Widow took so long to come out in the theaters. You know, because some of the um, video uh, folks I watched, they were saying that, no, the reason is, is that there were promises and those promises said that it was coming strictly to theaters. Um, so only time in a courtroom will tell, you know, so ladies. Oh, and she's not yes. the only one. I believe Emma Stone is in the suit, is in is, is a part of the Sewer Corporation squad. Uh, I think she's I think she's going after Disney as well because of um, Cruella. Hmm. You know, that, there's a few people and Warner Brothers was like, um, nope. They <laughs> went back and <laughs> went look at all the contracts and they were like, all right, well, shit. Give them money, give them, you know, give them the money because we do not want to go into court, you know, so. I'm, I'm hoping both parties will come to an amicable agreement. And I know I talk too much on it, but I would like to hear what y'all think about it. Chris, Dave, I don't think it's going to hurt the Disney train. I don't think it's going to hurt the Marvel train, but it's not, it's, it's not gonna, I mean, it's, it's gonna, I don't know, depending on how this plays out, you know, it's going to look bad. I mean, obviously it looks bad for him right now anyway, but it's not going to hurt anything in the long run as far as, I mean, look, I mean, Disney's a monster, man. Yeah. You're not going to hurt them by a little bit of, as they would put it, short yeah. you know, like whoever you would, like I said, whoever's in the right or wrong here, because I don't I'm, look, I'm not, I'm not in there when these contracts are made. Right. I'm just a regular right. douche canoe, you know? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just hard to say, but it's definitely not going to affect anything with their bottom line, you know? Mm-hmm. They're just, at most, it'll be a little bit of bad publicity for them, you know, yeah. unfortunately. So she's in the right. No matter what, whoever's in the right wrong, probably, you know, old Johansson's going to lose anyway, regardless. Yeah, sadly, sadly. Yeah. Chris? It sounds like a bad breakup. <laughs> everything away from her that she was signed for. Right. It's just... It's just the landscape now, man. It's, that's what you get to look forward to. I mean, with the digital releases and everything. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. Or just going to be, I guess, actors are going to look, look into that more. You know, it's going to be like a red flag for a lot of uh, people right. doing movies now. Right. And I think we might have, I, I it, it feels very strong like we're going to have a repeat of the strikes that happened in the 80s uh, in the entertainment industry when there was the writer strike in the 80s. Um, then again, I think in the late nineties, early two thousands, they, they did, a, they had another strike and it was about, you know, the broadcast rights, you know, and the crazy thing is, is that the strike in 80, 86, 87 brought forth the demon that is known as reality television, you know, cause yeah. the first show to come out of the strike was a little show on Fox called cops. And we yeah. all know what kind of phenomenon My that is. <laughs> and now, you know, they did it again because it was digital rights, but not in the streaming sense. The digital rights came from DVDs. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, well, we signed a contract. All right. So for every VHS tape that was rented or sold, you get a percentage. Well, we come up with a new medium. It's called DVDs, you know, mm -hmm. digital versus our disc. 
well, that sounds like gangbusters, but we ain't getting a cut of it. You know, read the Dave Chappelle situation, you know, with the Chappelle show. The DVDs sold like crazy. So I, I agree, Chris. They every agent has got to pay attention to the digital side, you know. So True. bad breakup, but hopefully cooler heads shall prevail. I think it may not even go to court. I think they're gonna be like, all right. Mickey's gonna sit there and go, give her some cash, pay her off and ship her out. I'll mm. throw her off the cliff again, damn it. <laughs> um, so I think they're gonna give her, you know, something that'll be like, all right, here you go. Here you know, let, let's be friends here. Here you go. But you ain't coming back to the MCU. We killed your ass. We got another one. <laughs> you know, Disney period. Yeah. yeah, you know, see you. You know, they might look at it and go take that shit to Netflix. But hey, can't knock Netflix because man, they are humping, they are huffing and puffing, and they are looking for stuff. So, with that being said, there's some suing, but now we're gonna go into the squad themselves, the actual suicide squad pew, pew, pew. and their greatest nemesis, the Rona. <laughs> the suicide squad's box office. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this the I know people were yelling that the Suicide Squad was a flop at the box office, but there was two major things. Many say there were six, but I like to look at the two major ones. These were the reasons this movie didn't make money. One, HBO Max. If you have HBO Max, you watched it at home. You didn't pay a fee. You weren't asked to pay a fee other than, you know, your subscription. And you got to watch it in the comforts of your own home. The only money you spent was the electricity bill and your um, internet service, right? But also, we are still in a broken Panasonic tape deck, ladies and gentlemen. The groove is not in the heart. The groove is not even out in the speakers. We are not moving and grooving like we usually do. So this movie was not going to make a killing at the box office. And I think they say they made what, like 26, 27 million um, opening weekend, which I think so, which, OK, yeah, we get it. It's not um, like the original Suicide Squad did. You know, I think in total that fr- that movie made over seven hundred and sixty eight million altogether. You know, that's worldwide domestic. You know, it made a nice chunk of change for Warner Brothers. But the fact, just like with Black Widow, you have other factors that came into it, you know, and then you have the folks who say, hey, the movie just sucked. It wasn't good. Then you have folks like us who actually enjoyed the movie, but we watched it at home. Well, honestly, I didn't even know it's coming out. There's no advertising saying, hey, well, I didn't see any advertising say it was coming out. So, I mean... Well, and Warner Brothers kind of screwed the pooch on it with advertising because they really just advertise like on sci-fi and I think on WWE um, programming. Like it wasn't a massive. There wasn't a huge buzz or anything. Right. It wasn't a huge push. They push HBO Max heavy, you know, and they would have you can see first run movies, all the biggest movies in the theater on HBO Max and the Suicide Squad was a part of it. But it ne- they never just went and said, you know what, let's go ahead and just put a little more change in it and just go off. You know, hell, they didn't even advertise it on TBS and TBS is a Warner company. You know, so it's just like, OK, but after I think maybe the, the opening weekend, I started seeing commercials, a lot more commercials for it. You know, it's the bomb, the bomb, the bomb, and boo, 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 and it's like, oh, okay, well, why didn't y'all do that? You know, two weeks prior to really push yeah, this movie. It, it definitely out. needed a bigger push. I mean, yeah. looking at it too, I mean, your scores for it are still insanely high as far as yeah. reviews and everything. You know, fan, like, there are not fans. from only critics, but yeah, from from us, us regular Joes. Yeah, the fans what the fans enjoyed what James Gunn did. Now, nah, like I said, there are some who are like, "Oh, this was crap," <laughs> you know, just uh, blah, 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 blah. you know, Disney, not Disney, excuse me, DC is never gonna get a win, you know. And I've always said, yeah, ever since Batman v Superman, it is hard 
it's going to be hard pressed for DC to come out with a movie that will truly pull people together and say, you did it. Ever since yeah. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> the Martha curse continues, you know? So those are the two things I think that held the movie back. Um, it may find a resurgence in um, rental. It may become a cult hit, you know, because I think it has some... Like I said, this is a highly budgeted trauma film. And that's how trauma got its name. They make cult classics. And I think this may become one of those kind of classics. Folks will probably make a cut without the Harley love story. And just go, you know, the Suicide Squad full and see everybody getting blown up. A drinking game. <laughs> yeah. Every time someone dies, drink. You know, you'll be pretty much pissed drunk before the credits. Yep. Yeah, so sadly, um, it didn't do well, but it made mo- it made some money, but not the money many folks were projecting. So when it doesn't make that, the first thing they say is a flop. Oh, it's a flop. They don't look at the factors. Mm-hmm. They just say it's a flop. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Like, like we've been saying for over a year now, you know, <sighs> Dude, not everyone's going to come back to the theaters right now. I mean, yeah. you see what's going on. I mean, heck, you you, you see this state, other Ooh. intelligent states like Florida, you know. I mean, yeah, come on, man. Like, we're number one, guys, Louisiana. If it's something we're going to be number one in, it's fucking up. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, sadly, like I said, somewhere down the line, we'll be back may not be in the capacity of an in-game moment or, you know, when movies like this were just pulling us all in on those Thursday nights, Friday nights, Saturday and Sunday nights. But some, somewhere down the line, we will get there. Yeah, we, we will be back. Like, I look, it's going to happen, but these everyone's trying to push it too hard. Like, right. you can't have these kind of expectations right now, you know? And you also got to realize that at least our theater, I don't know if all of them do this, but you couldn't sit by somebody you didn't know. Right. Theaters aren't maxing out either. No, not at all. Correct. Not at all. So give it time, ladies and gentlemen, and keep that flop shit to yourself. Like, and it's not, not, not like us, but those critics and people who do the variety reports and the box office reports. If you're not going to say, look, this pandemic is truly affecting the you know life in the theater just stop you know don't even give the numbers anymore just be like okay it was an okay movie just tell me if the movie's good or not that's all i want that's all i care about anyway yeah i I don't i I ain't getting a cut of that box office (laughs) but you know kudos to warner brothers and warner media for actually going back and saying well Here's some money, you know. <laughs> hey, John Cena, <laughs> we can see you. Here's a check. You know, Idris Elba, here's an extra check. Margot Robbie, the only reason why I think many people went see the movie. Here's a check. Thank you for not wearing skimpy shorts. Extra check. You know, so who knows? Good luck. And as they say, good riddance. <laughs> Moving on. And, and speaking of Idris. Speaking of the man. Speaking of the man, broth. You know, hello, Idris Elba. Uh, wait, I don't know why I sounded like Maury from Flight of the Con- Concords. Brit. Ladies and gentlemen, Sonic has met his friend, Big Nuck, and Big Nuck has a voice. <laughs> and that voice comes from Stringer Bell himself, Mr. Idris Elba. Yeah. Pointy head some, and he's all. He's for some knuckles, actually. <laughs> hello, hello. No, um... I think it was earlier this week, Idris Elba on his Twitter page just posts this one picture that is nine out of 10 going to replace the author fist meme <laughs> with the echidna fist of one said character known as Knuckles with two words, knock, knock. And if you know where knock, knock comes from, kudos. If you don't, I don't have time. Just go watch The Wire. You'll know. He is now the voice of Knuckles the Echidna in the uh, Sonic sequel, better known right now as Sonic 2. I'm excited because I still say it and I'm going to hold on to this fight. 
Sonic the Hedgehog is the greatest movie video game movie adaptation ever made. Shut your face, Chris. You can fight <laughs> with your family. You're gonna lose with me. It is way better than what came, and I enjoyed Mortal Kombat, but I found it better than Mortal Kombat. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna hold that. Nope, it was better than Super Mario <laughs> Brothers. Um, what are the, what? Oh, Jill. no, the wizard is not a, it's just a game. Hey, wait, 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 it was, it was better than Mario Mario and Luigi Mario? Luigi Mario? Damn right it was. <laughs> yes, yes. Like I said, if you want to refute me, you can put it in the, com- in the comments, but you can go fight your mama. Don't come <laughs> fight with me. You're going to lose. Now, I know Chris. What is, what is your favorite video game adaptation? Oh, it's gonna be Silent Hill. Silent that was, Hill. Uh, that was a great movie, like film, like with the falling ash and. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I thought it was filmed very nice. I mean, it yeah. Was, it was a scary ass movie. But did it have a fox with two tails that flew? No. I got a guy with a pyramid head. <laughs> <laughs> I could watch a movie. Oh. I could watch Mississippi Burning and see a bunch of pyramid heads. It's called a clan. Moving on. No, <laughs> you're wrong. You know? <laughs> As I was told Friday, splish, splash, your opinion is trash. And I, I just went, okay, but it's still my treasure. And I will I will stand on that hill. Sonic was the best one. That's all. That's all. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> In the comments, put your favorite video game movie adaptation. What's David's? David? Resident Evil. No. Mm, oh, he's probably going to say Mortal no. Kombat 94. <laughs> no. I mean, that was fun, though. No, my Okay, my favorite, and, it, and it's my favorite because it's so cheesy and so awesomely bad, okay. is Street Fighter. <laughs> Street Fighter. Okay. Because it's so cheesy and so just over the top. And you had, um, you know, Jean-Claude as, you know, the the American. Yeah, what the hell? Jean-Claude was the American guy. You know, yeah, we're we going to kick Bison ass. <laughs> you know, and then, and then you, had, you had freaking Raul Julia, man. Yes. That dude. One of the greatest I mean, actors I mean, of our childhood in time. <laughs> for, for, for you guys, this, this geek table talk was was the greatest time of your life it changed you but for but for bison it's a it was a tuesday yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and sadly he passed away after that movie i know man i say well it, it's sad because it was such a cheese ball movie and like he's a good actor but and that's it that's how it's that's how it kind of went out on but i mean but still i still did, love it he, he, he hammed it up all of it he played gomez adams so oh, we yeah. can't you know the man had range, um, but once again, but that's my favorite, just because of, yeah. not because it's amazing, but right, <laughs> God, I, dude, I could watch it anytime just because it's so goofy and so bad. Just, good. Yeah, God. well, and, I mean, and, D, DJ should have wanted to stay at Microsoft instead of working <laughs> for Bison. Come on, man. <laughs> and the cool thing is, is that you're not alone because um, France, who dropped a comment on a um, couple of episodes back i think in episode eight she did um she put a comment on the mortal Kombat review which you could check up here and she basically said yeah you know yeah this one's okay thanks for the review but i'm gonna stick to my guns and i love the original mortal Kombat and street fighter dude that's what i because she's a huge um jcvd fan so if you don't know what that means jean-claude van damme the you muscles from Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, nothing's wrong with that. Oh I God. just say Sonic, you know, it was it was perfection. So congrats to Idris Elba. There's gonna be a whole lot of women in the theater wanting to see this red. Wait, where, where's he at? Oh, he's the voice. Oh, he's no. the voice. Yeah, you're not gonna no ma'am. You you, you can't just become close, bold close their eyes and just and just dream. <laughs> Why don't you hit me with those uh spike hands, baby? <laughs> Get hands on me. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna get hands on. So um that I believe is coming in 2022. 
I think they say it's slated I for think so. uh, fall of next year. So we'll finally get to see um, the actual design of Knuckles. We only saw the fist, but really cool texture. We see, we know it's a glove. So my question is, will he ever take the glove off so we could see what his hands look like without the glove? You Where's know, Tails? Tails, is, Tails was in the, in the first movie What's at up? the end. Spoiler. <laughs> so we're going to get, we're going to get the whole gang. We're going to get Robotnik, Sonic, Tails, uh, Knuckles. Um, what was the, the little female one? Amy. I wonder if Amy's going to pop up in there. You know, we get some Sonic Adventure kind of movie. You know, we don't know. But all I want to hear is if they actually do it is from the first Sonic Adventure. Remember when he finally becomes so- Super Sonic? Yep. And that song comes on. Go, go, Rage and Lightning. Go, go. And I'm just like, yes, I will bring, open up my heart. Bring back the songs from Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Oh, dude. The Sonic yeah. Sonic Adventure 2. You know, me around and be <laughs> But I would really love to hear the theme to Sonic CD in the movie. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, Sonic Boom. That song. Sonic made... Boom. Sonic Boom. Yep. <laughs> Save the planet from disaster. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Sing that song, you bitch. Yes. <laughs> you know? That song. Follow the rainbow. Oh, man. Bring, that, bring those songs back. And then no other video game movie will ever touch Sonic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't care anymore, you know. So once again, congratulations to Idris Elba. Congrats to the whole cast and crew. Um, hopefully, Knuckles will not have to go through a cosmetic change like they did um, Sonic. That's all I can say. Hey, they, they, they learn. You got to give it to oh, them, yeah. man. They, they took the feedback and were like, all right, cool. And then they went back and... Right, we have money. <laughs> they, they fixed it, man, and made it look not like trash. Exactly. <laughs> so we shall see in 2022 what we get. All right, moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cash Grab Express chugs right on through into your pocketbooks <laughs> because Rockstar says... You want GTA 6? Fuck you. (laughs) It's time to bring back the trilogy. And we're not talking about episodes four, five, and six of Star Wars. No, we're talking about a much better trilogy. The Grand Theft Auto trilogy is coming. Remastered. Not remade. Remastered. With a nice HD polish. And it's now this is still a rumor. I was about to say this is still a rumor. Still a rumor. <laughs> it's supposed to hit in November, November or December of this year, 2021, the year of our Lord. But not only, not only will it be coming out for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X. Oh no, this bad boy is also coming out for the Nintendo switch yeah apparently wow. if also reading this right not only it's like you know all those the switch now but it's also apparently pc stadia and mobile Dude. so they they're going for broke getting, yeah getting the, the, the cash grab they are they are not caring they are like you suckers have played <laughs> the gta 5 you, you want gta 6 give us your money for mobile oh, yes. I want it too. i mean there's nothing <laughs> It's barely any memory in one and two. I mean, and I actually enjoyed one and two. One and I two were really like that top down, like you're like a yeah. little hand, you know? yeah, I mean, It was like I was playing Spy Hunter with Brits. Yeah. Like, with a Cockney accent. <laughs> Golf. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Um, and Kotaku was the one to come up with the story. Uh, they saying it appears to be real and it's coming to the Switch. And I believe this will be the second GTA game to come on to, to reach um, a Nintendo console or handheld since Chinatown War. I was going to say, maybe the Chinatown War is cool. Chinatown Wars, <laughs> hey, it was a good game, but it had a much better kick-ass soundtrack. Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang forever. Uh, so we're supposed to get GTA 3, GTA Vice City, as well as GTA San Andreas with a nice HD gloss 
um, new look. Dude, with... Now we can have HD memes of it. Oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Again. <laughs> so I have never, and I'll, okay, you could take my gamer card. I don't give a shit. I've played and beaten Vice City. I've played and beaten San Andreas, but GTA 3, I've only played partially. And I never really like push myself to play it all the way, you know? So this time, I think I will give Rockstar a couple of dollars and get the trilogy. And hopefully, I will sit and play GTA 3 first, then go to Vice City, then go to San Andreas. Hey, or, I might just, or I might just say, eh, you know what? Still not interested. I need to listen to Today is a Good Day on repeat. <laughs> while i play uh gta san andreas bam, bam, <laughs> bam, bam. <laughs> and i think the beauty of it is ladies and gentlemen you always kind of have a feeling when a company is going to remake or bring back a franchise because they start taking down those um those modded gta games real quick you know, even folks who were like, hey, look, I know how to use um, this modeling software. I just want to show off. Look what I did with CJ. This is how he looked on the PS2. This is how he would look on a PS4. And they were like, oh, that's nice. Take that shit down. We own it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so take two was basically just putting the axe to all the mods. And um, that's usually a sign that we're we're remaking we're actually going to do a full remake or we're going to remaster to go for the cash grab so my question is to you guys are you going to purchase the trilogy if and so this is real and it comes out this year i'm gonna give a firm bugs bunny style meme no <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm not gonna lie you guys i'm in that minority that's I'll play a GTA for about four seconds, but I don't want to own it and beat it because I don't care. Got you. Sorry. <laughs> Chris? <laughs> if it's like 60 bucks, most likely not. I yeah. mean, I'm tired of these remasters charging full price for like a 10-year-old game or something like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, right. I played them, I enjoyed them, but if it's a price tag like 60 bucks, not. But if it's like 19.99, maybe. I guess yeah. it depends on the price. If they try to like charge a full price for three year, twenty year old games or ten year old games, and mm -hmm. hell no. And I say it is not Diablo two, so <laughs> I'm probably not getting it. <laughs> and we don't know what Diablo two is going to do. I mean, it has the right. Blizzard shut down? Huh? Blizzard um, shut down for a while. Well, yeah, because of those um allegations and everything. Right. But I mean, yeah, when, you turn, when I turn on my PS five. Diablo 2 Resurrected is still there with all in all of its pride and joy. Like, hey, you might want to come and pre-order, baby, because <laughs> you might want to cut some ears. And I'm just like, I do want to cut some ears. I'm definitely getting that now. Yeah. Hopefully it's not going to be $59, $69. Um, that should be more like $29. Definitely. Like, remakes should, uh, for me, remakes should not be full price games. Um, I mean, full, yeah, full price games. Yeah, I was right. It, it just shouldn't be that now that's just me once again that's my um socialist nerd that i am the socialist blurred that i am um if it's something that is so damn old that you're like okay we're just gonna give it you know the 1080p up upgrade upscale and we're gonna clean up the polygons a little bit cool 30 bucks is as good as it gets should right. be the price right half off it should be 30 um now if you did something like what square enix did with the um with final fantasy 7 where it was like all new everything is the same game yeah, I mean, but everything is just all new then i could i could see yeah. a, a 60 dollar game right. i can't see a 70 or 80 dollar game i could see a between a 50 and 60 dollar game that I can see. But if Take Two and Rockstar are just sitting there going, all right, we're just going to give it the uh, GTA 5 look. Here we go. Goodbye. And you bring nothing new to the party? Right. 30 bucks. Maybe even 40. I'll be nice. 39.99. We draw the line. You know, so 
if hey folks watching if you have um if if you're gonna get it do you think that's a fair price uh let us know in the comments how you feel if you're a gta fanatic you're gonna buy it regardless probably but what price would you pay for it you know yeah i know some folks are saying you're getting three games so it's like 20 dollars per game and i'm like no 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 you gotta wow me to go back 20 years ago and and i want to play it you know that that's just me that is just me so i'm i think we're done with that right <laughs> yeah we're done but Speaking of old characters and old games, oh, we can't sing the birthday song because we'll be sued. We don't own the rights to that. But we do want to give... Happy you day to you. <laughs> happy coming up the to mommy's to womb. Huh? It does own the rights to happy birthday. <laughs> uh, two old women. That's all I know. <laughs> really? That's all I know. Two old women. Um, got it. Damn you old ladies. <laughs> boomers <laughs> damn you all but um quick happy birthday to two legends two legendary characters in video game them first off since their birthday came first huge shout out and huge birthday to link zelda ganon the little fairy uh <laughs> the world of hyrule tingle man tingle, yeah the old man <laughs> happy 35th birthday to the legend of zelda which hit in japan now these are the, the hyrule fantasy dog there we go a hyrule fantasy there we go um this hit back in march of 1986 in japan on the nintendo famicom disc system it wasn't a cartridge it was an actual oh. floppy disc the old family computer with you know, its nice little side yeah. A and B. <laughs> yep, the good stuff. So, happy birthday to them. Whew! We're going to get into it. Um, big shout out to Shigeru Miyamoto and Gunpei, and I'm hoping I'm saying his name properly. May he rest in peace. Uh, Gunpei Yokoi for coming up with one of the biggest adventure games and franchises in video game history. Um... I'm just going to run through this right quick because what I want to know is to Chris and Dave what, in the franchise, what is your favorite Zelda game? And then what is your favorite Zelda moment? Oh, we'll okay. Go, we'll okay, cool. Speak. Whoa. <laughs> you know, I uh, said Chris and Dave, so I kind of make Chris go first. All right. So but, yeah, if we're, <laughs> we're pro. Okay. It's hard to say. Uh, Cause I'm not going to lie to you. I, I freaking love Breath of the Wild, man. That game mm -hmm. is amazing. Everything about it is awesome. But then I also, you know, when we moved into that Super Famicom area, Super yeah. Nintendo, all that, A Link to the Past, man, that game is just, I don't know, man. It's probably toss-up between those or they're on equal footing, you mm -hmm. know, because they're both, I mean, they're both wildly different games, but... Right. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's a, let's do a tie between those two, you know? Okay. Uh, that, between that. Breath of the Wild and Link to the Past. Okay. Awesome. 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 Favorite game moment in the, in the Zelda franchise. It doesn't have to be from the two favorite games. Hmm. And, okay, that one I have to think about. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on, Chris. Okay, Chris. Favorite game in the franchise, favorite game moment in the franchise? Um, I got to go with the original. I mean, okay. I mean, I grew up with Atari, and the first time I seen Zelda, I could not stop thinking about it. I wanted to play it. Yeah. Thank my parents forever for it. Finally got it, played it nonstop. Always went back to it, played it some more. I mean, first open world game, technically. Yeah. Um, just played the hell out of it. Just, I, I never had that feeling playing another Zelda game since then, just how much I enjoyed that game moment awesome. i don't know i haven't really played much past the mm -hmm. super nintendo version uh link to the past okay oh but i guess the moment would be when it switched to the dark world from light to dark world and you got to play the game all over again right That's right a nice nice well i will say for me um my favorite in the zelda franchise one yes the original but my all-time favorite will always be ocarina time 
Now, I know the Zelda purists are coming. I know they're coming. Them games, no, no, no. It's it's Majora's Mask. It's Majora's Mask. I'm like, Majora's Mask is a game when you play that you need therapy after you play it. Ocarina of Time, for me, is the game that actually just went... I'm going to move this light here. Um, it was, one, the first all 3D Zelda game, you know. But just like the original Legend of Zelda, the title screen brought me in and held me captive. I could not push that start button. Like when you went, okay, go back to the original. You see the world going, oh, you know, the horses goodness. and everything. Yes, like, and it's and it's Link riding on a pony, mm-hmm. and you hear the ocarina playing, which is the warp flute from Mario, but was also the flute from The Legend of Zelda, that was the tune. And you just, it just gave you the sense of you're about to go on an adventure that you will never forget, you know? And for me, Ocarina of Time just did it for me. Now for the original Zelda, it was just the title screen. Beating Ganon, yes. Meeting Ganon and whipping Ganon's big piglet ass. (laughs) The original Ooh. Zelda, you know, I think about that at times I'm like, man, you know, because I've gone back and tried going through a few times or have gone through it. But I'm like, man, how the hell as some little bastard, little dumb kid bastard, <laughs> did I get through this game and beat it? Because I'm like, dude, nowadays I'm like, dude, I have no idea where the hell I'm going. Like, where right. is this dungeon at? Like, what? I still remember all the heart containers are. How, the, how did I do that as a little dumbass? Like... <laughs> Back with Nintendo Power and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> internet. And the only That's what I'm way saying. It's like, how did I do this as a little dumbass with no internet? <laughs> it came with that map, though. You never had the map. <laughs> yep. And the beauty of it is a um, little bit of trivia. Uh, when the game finally came out in America, uh, the year later, by the 87, and we had the gold cartridge. Oh, yeah. My golden cart. Two games. Well, these two games had to jockey for one component. Zelda and Metroid had to battle for who was going to get the battery backup in the cartridge because Nintendo was like, we don't have enough money to put batteries in all our games. So which game is going to get it? And lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, they did make the right choice in putting the battery backup in Zelda because I swear if it wasn't there, we, I think all gamers would pretty much become cycles <laughs> especially when you yeah. get into that level where it was almost like a maze and you get caught and if you went in the wrong direction you stayed in there forever and forever oh, yeah, like basically the, the, the you lost know, woods and everything the lost woods mind, yep. yeah so great choice nintendo because man i think a lot of um nes controllers and televisions would be broken a mm-hmm. lot of NESs would be thrown out the window. <laughs> so that was a great move by them. And like I said, for me, the title screen of those two games, the music, hearing, you know, the original Legend of Zelda theme song right when you hit power. And it just it just comes in. It, it's not a, um, a build up. It's just like, and I'm just like, hmm, okay. I'm interested. This Here's is getting people. epic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then it just... And I'm like, oh, all right. Screen darkens. You get the, the text going like, yeah. this, all right, this, this is the deal, boys. This is what we're in for. <laughs> in the, and stuff like that. Yeah. In the land of Hyrule. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Hyrule, what? <laughs> <laughs> And you hit start and, you know, it gives you like, hey, are you, you want to take this save file, this save file or this save file? And I'm like, I don't care. You hit start again and it's like, boom, and I'm like, this is some adventure Whoa. for that ass. Let's go. <laughs> also, two games in one. They had the second quest too once you beat the first one. Right. That, another or, thing. Or, or you could, you know, as a little kid, be be a maskist and do the second quest first, naming yeah. yourself Zelda and all that. 
I played Mike Tyson's punch out. I can beat Mike Tyson. I'm crazy, kids. That sneaky quest was hard, though. They had like invisible walls and shit. Yeah. Or the first time you found, you threw the bomb at a wall. Do, 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 do. You know, Wait, it's like, I can, I can blow up walls? What the f- What? <laughs> you know, and it was the game that, unlike Super Mario Brothers, where you could only go right, you can go left, right, up, down. Miyamoto caught us. It, it, it took us off guard. We didn't understand. You know, we didn't, I, like, Holy crap. Big boy adventure. Like, exactly. whoa. Exactly. <laughs> this was the things that, you know, you used to play with your friends with stick swords. Yeah. You know, that you're the hero. And lo and behold, yes, the story was convoluted as hell. But damn it, it, it just made us feel, it made you feel like you are a hero. You, you're definitely a hero. You got you got the gist of it, though. It's like, all right, all right, boys, I'm the hero. Yep. We, we, we kicking ass. We getting Zelda. We 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 beating Ganon. There we go. <laughs> That's I feel it. Like when you find the, the Triforce, Rapti. the trilogy. <laughs> find the rap, you're like, hey, bust out that map. Let's find out all the ducks. <laughs> yeah, let's make it. We're going on an adventure, kids. No one's ducks. stopping us. <laughs> we. <laughs> so, shout shout out to our boy. Yes, indeed. Big shout out. But now that we have said this, and yes, I am a fan of Zelda, but I am a much much bigger fan of the next game ladies and gentlemen happy 35th birthday to that sexy space hunter let me do it right space bounty hunter known as samus aaron or samus aran depending on how you pronounce it mother brain ridley craig even adam and of course the baby the tiny baby metroid Mitty Dine. Mitty Dine. Happy birthday to Metroid, aka Space Hunter, which it was known in Japan, that came out August 6, 1986. Another game that was on the Famicom disk drive. Um, I'm just going to say my shout outs because we all know Shigeru Miyamoto is the uh, golden goose of Nintendo. He gave us Donkey Kong. He gave us Popeye. He gave us um, Legend of Zelda. I think he also had a hand in Pokemon. (laughs) Star Fox. He gave us all the big titles. But when you think of trilogy, especially with the NES, it was Mario, it was Link and Zelda, and this unknown, this unknown, like, it, it hurts my heart. Samus Aran, Metroid. Metroid... These were the first three big games for Nintendo, and especially R&D 1 for that system. Metroid is, if you look at the Holy Trinity, Mario is God, (laughs) Zelda is Jesus, Metroid is the Holy Spirit that no one talks about. (laughs) Like, even if if, if, if you're a Christian, you always say, God the Father, God the Son, and you know, there's that flame, that Holy Spirit, it's there. You know, it fills my heart. That was Metroid. Metroid is the black sheep of that trilogy. But let me tell you something. That game changed a fucking lot in the realm of of genres, of video games. It created its own genre. Metroidvania. And yes, I know people say, well, but Castlevania. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. Castlevania. We we get it, but but what's that first first part of the name? It's not Again? Castle Troy. No, it's Metroidvania. And why they put the Vania in there is because Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, hate it or love it, you're going to probably hate what I say. It was more of a Metroidvania than it was an RPG. And that's it was more of a Metroid game than anything. Castlevania, Symphony of the Dark, brought forth RPG elements into the Metroid style of gaming, backtracking, all of it. So I'm done with that. If you want to fight me, once again, fight your mama. Don't come fight me. You're going to lose. But I do want to give a huge, huge shout out to the creators. You know, Sataru Okada, Okada, I always got to say his name perfectly, Gunpei Yokoi. This man gave us not only not only Nintendo's arcade run, but also gave us the Game Boy, 
sadly gave us the virtual boy, <laughs> you know, and he, he passed away, you know, right after that. But he was in charge of um, Nintendo's R&D one, which is um, research and development group one. And the story to Metroid, which was known as Space Hunter, and I'm, I'm going to try and be quick. I want to give equal love, but mm, Metroid just does something for me. His whole, op, his whole outlook to Metroid was, he told him the group, make a game that Miyamoto-san wouldn't make. That's it. That is it. That was his whole line to this group. He looked them dead in their damn eyes and said, you make a game that he won't make. Because Yokoi was very, um, he, was, he, he loved competition. He was very competitive, but he was also a jealous man. Because <laughs> he was jealous at R&D 2 because they created the Famicom, which became the NES system. And that blew the Game & Watch, which he is the father of the Game & Watch, out the water which is making a comeback, which, yay, I hope they make a Metroid game and watch. Um, so Space Hunter comes out. It's too big for the original Famicom um, cartridges. So they had to keep going back, keep going back. And this one person, well, actually two other people, um, Hiroji um, Kiyotake, who was um, one of the main designers of the game, and the great Yoshihiro Sakamoto. Mm, that's my boy. They go in and they're coming up with different ways in order to try to squeeze the game into the um, the actual cartridge. And Kiyotake was like, okay, these maps are going to be huge. That's how I want the game design. Yokoi is like, go for it. Sakamoto <laughs> comes in and he's starting to try to put it in there and he's like, this ain't going to work. Chop him. And like Metroid was supposed to be way bigger than what it was. But once they found out, nah, we're going to have to put it on the disk drive because the cartridges were only 112 kilobytes, y'all. 112. The disk drive, 128 kilobytes of pure gaming pow, 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 power. Okay, no one cared about those old commercials. But you got to go listen to the old Famicom disk drive commercials because that's what they translated to. Yeah, they're pretty nuts. And they put the game there. This game was in like development hell up to two months, up until the two months it dropped because they would finish it. They would say, here, hey, Gunpei, play it. And he would play it and sit on it. And he would play it again, play it again, play it again, play it again. And then he'd be like, changes. I want all of this changed. So they had to hurry up and change it before it went out. But the beauty of Metroid, this is what it did where everyone was playing in one direction. Now, this is where, you know, people say, well, Met Metroid didn't do it, Zelda did it. Zelda was top down. So you could go left, right, up, down, you know, north, south, east, west. Metroid in the vein of Mario, which were side-scrolling, Metroid let you backtrack. So where every game you played automatically told you go right, Metroid was the first game to tell you, bitch, you ain't got to go right all the time. Go left. You'll find something. And thus, the shock. Boom, bang, ping. Metroid's born. Um, it, also, it also brought one of the best questions ever asked. Why you no crawl, Metroid? <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember that. It was a question and answer thing that they did. Why Metroid not, why Metroid not crawl? And come to find out was because of the limitations, the crawl animation didn't work. So they went with turn turn Samus into a ball. It's also one of the first games where you played as a girl in the shocker of all time. If you truly finish this game under two hours, you got the perfect ending, which was goodbye, various suit. Hello, bikini Samus. Another little tidbit. It's a trick. <laughs> there was an actual rumored ending, ending where if you truly played this game under, I think, an, if you got to an hour, Samus was naked. <laughs> but once again, that's Japan and Nintendo. And Nintendo used to own love hotels. Go figure. They were pimping back then. So came out 
um, August 6th of 1986 and then came to America a year later. And thus, 10-year-old Anthony finds his first love, becomes a true gamer. Metroid is the game that made me become and realize that I'm a fucking gamer. Like everything about this game, there is no map. This game is really made for you to go and shoot up a bank or something. Like explore. It, it, you're supposed to explore, and you're supposed to get these new um powers and things of that nature that lets you explore more. But if you don't know where you're going, you're going to hate this game. But I couldn't hate it because just like Zelda and that title screen music. Metroid's music that was it bing 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 I'm like ooh this is this is interesting because my dad bought it for me I didn't even ask for Metroid I didn't know what the hell Metroid was but he just came from KB Toys hey you got an A take that game <laughs> go about your business I put it in the NES push the power button and oh my. I was like wait okay this is a space game okay cool I did not know what I was getting into but damn I was so glad I did and it spawned a bunch of games um, we've had Metroid Metroid 2 Samus Returns we've had Metroid 3 better known as Super Metroid then we had Metroid 4 Fusion then from there, we had the Zero Mission, which was a remake, a beautiful remake of the original Metroid, but we cannot forget the Prime Trilogy and Metroid Other M. It was made, yes, it existed, as well as Metroid Prime uh, Pinball, which was fucking awesome. I love that game. And then we had Federation Force. God, that game existed but it came back to its glory when mercury steam took over and remade um samus um uh, metroid 2 the return of samus and made samus returns for the game boy ds which i should have took it and put it on screen but i own that ds and now for the 35th anniversary something nintendo no one thought nintendo would do they are dropping a brand new Metroid game, Metroid 5. Dread. A 2D one. 2D, mind you. And on the 35th year of its inception, its release to the world, they've given it love and they were like, yeah, you know, sometimes you got to accept the black sheep for what it is. <laughs> and they are dropping Dread. This is part five. Um, Yosh Yoshiro? Um, sorry. Yoshio Sakamoto is working on this one. And the reason why I'm so happy Sakamoto is working with Mercury Steam on this is because, and this is where I'm going to just say, this is my favorite game of the franchise. While number one, introduce me to, to the love of Samus. Super Metroid told me I am going to be a fanatic till the end of time of that series, of that franchise. Because Super Metroid 3, well, Metroid 3, Super Metroid that came out on the um, Super Nintendo back in 94, 94, 95. That game was the shit. And to me, I know folks will say, no, A Link to the Past. Or they'll say, um, I guess Act Razor, because I love Act Razor. I don't know. I'm just throwing games. Final Fantasy 3. They'll probably say that. I consider Super Metroid the greatest Super Nintendo game ever made because of the music, the action, the story, and I will say my favorite part of that franchise, Mother Brain turning into Godzilla at the end of Super Metroid. Because you know, you go back, you're on Zebus, you kill her, you're like, yeah! And then all of a sudden, I'm like, what the hell? And this big brain bitch grows a body with Tyrannosaurus Rex legs and arms and a skeletal neck and this, you know, mouth full of teeth 
and it starts screaming and I am shooting this thing, hitting it with bombs, missiles, whatever I could find, I'm throwing pixels at this heifer. And it is killing me, beating me, <laughs> and it hits me with the rainbow bridge, uh, I, yeah, eye cannon. And then here come baby Metroid with ain't baby Metroid no more. <laughs> baby Metroid went from T to Gro. If you, you know, if you know French petite Gro, small thing. And saves me. And I get the hyper beam and I beat the shit out of her and I get the ultimate ending. And I'm so like, all right, I'll never play another game again. This is the <laughs> greatest game ever. I am through. So with that being said, now you know my love for Metroid. My love for Metroid. Um, Dave, Chris, have you played Metroid or any of the Metroids? Dark, Dark Samus. <laughs> um, what's your favorite and what's your favorite moment in the series? Let's go with Chris first. Uh, I gotta go with Super Metroid. I agree okay. with you. Um, yeah, just As you should, game. correct. Yeah. It was a little confused at first because I never played the Game Boy version. So mm -hmm. she shows up with another Metroid. I'm like, who's this baby Metroid? You know? yeah. <laughs> Why is it on you like that? <laughs> but I've only played the first in the uh, in Super Metroid. I never played any after that. So mm -hmm. moment, I really guess I don't have a moment except for, I guess, the ending of part one when you turn to a girl. It's like, oh, crap, you're a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing a girl all this time. <laughs> What is wrong with me? It's no. Because, kind of, I mean, it's refreshing because all the other heroes were men. It's like, wow. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that it was kind of always a girl because the whole thing about Metroid, it's really um, an homage to Ridley Scott's Alien. Right. That's the whole thing. Uh, I'm an empowered female character, uh, can kick ass and survive, you know, the monsters and all. Hell, one of the main uh, villains is called Ridley. You know, it's kind of like a duh. And the whole thing about the shock really was shocking, not to the Japanese players, but to the American and Western players. Ridley. Mm -hmm. um, who's gone through a dramatic change because Ridley was supposed to look like a xenomorph in the um, original game. But the instruction manuals, yes, kids, video games came with instruction manuals. What are those? <laughs> They were, um, when they went to localization and translation, I believe in Japan, there's really no um, gender role when you speak. It's not her or him. So when they spoke of Samus, they didn't have one. So when Nintendo of America was putting out the, going to print with it, they would always say he, he, him, 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 and he in the um, instruction manual. So if you got the right ending, you get the long hair and swimsuit or bikini and you realize that him was really a her and it was like oh shocker yay and they tricked me yeah how dare you make me play as a woman but i like it you know so dave favorite game favorite moment in the um franchise i think most people's favorite games in the series i mean let, let's be real there's good reason for this it's gonna be super metroid mm -hmm. now Super Metroid, I never actually owned when I was a kid and everything. I, I beat it later on, like through, through, oh God, emulation. Nintendo, and, season six. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, that game is fantastic. But for me, it's like the ones that I played the ever living shit out of mm -hmm. were the two that came out on the same day. Metroid Fusion, Fusion and Metroid Prime. Prime. At least yeah. same day in the NA, you know. And fusion man that was my jam that was like back to that old school 2d amazing you know mm -hmm. just metroid craziness prime first time i saw that i was like oh my god like i'm in the suit i'm like i'm shooting around there dude it's is amazing like yep. that was probably like for me the like whoa in the series because man you, you're in the suit you know you're you are you are samus you were the hunter you know you're going in there and that game, those games are nuts, you know, the Prime series. Mm -hmm. And I'm psyched that, you know, one day we'll get four. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Nintendo, but where's that development going? Thank you. Well, that's what I'm like. Thank, thank God Dread is coming out because Dread looks like it's going to be another fantastic. Like, I mean, the remake of two was amazing. Mm -hmm. 
so i'm i'm stoked for dread you know yeah but like i said the the tier from top tier always gonna be super metroid I, you, you can't beat it i mean but fusion and prime they hold that, that place in my heart man mm-hmm. at that top tier <laughs> You know how many times I got stuck in the wall in the original Metroid trying to get that armor? Yep. <laughs> you were supposed to, Nintendo Power had that trick. You're supposed to wall climb. Yeah. If you get stuck in the ball, you get stuck in the wall and you have to reset the wall. <laughs> I did that so many times. And that's the beauty of it. If you didn't have a password, back to the beginning. Oh, yeah. Back to the beginning. So we're going to say i'm going to say it once again happy birthday to the legend of zelda and metroid you made us three happy gamers and happy kids and better human beings um but now we move on and we got to wrap this bad boy up so we come to our favorite favorite part of the show where i ask what are you playing what are you watching what are you reading and we all know Christopher McNabb says literacy is for suckers. So, Chris, we're going to start with you. What are you playing? What are you reading? I am playing pretty much two games right now. The first is called The Ascent, Mm -hmm. like a cyberpunk Diablo game. Nice. Uh, We're playing that. And then the other one, uh, what was it? Uh, Darn. I know I'm still playing Atomic Crops as well. Oh, I started playing this dodgeball RPG. Oh, Uh, okay. Yeah, dodgeball RPG. Yeah, it's an RPG, and you actually fight playing dodgeball. That's your battles. Nice. (laughs) It's on Game Pass as well, so I started playing that as well. I think it's called Dodgeball Academy or something like that. Okay. Uh, The the Dodgeball Academia. Academia, that's it. Uh, (laughs) What I'm watching, I'm starting to watch What If, since it's now out. Nice. Yeah. Okay, Dave. So, you know, as far as watching, I mean, what if? I mean, had to check that out. First day. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Then now Amazon finally, or at least finally in the U.S., you know, apart from DVDs and whatever, but the fourth film finally here, uh, the rebuild of Evangelion series, you know? Oh, cool. The Neon Genesis Evangelion. Okay. You got the four films in the rebuild. The whole rebuild series finally out in the states. You can check that out on Prime and all. I'm hyped, you know. Nice. As far as uh, as far as playing, I, I'm I'm back on. I, I gotta I gotta get I gotta get moving, man. You know, for <laughs> Endwalker, I'm back on the Final <laughs> Fantasy 14 train. You know, nice. Gotta gotta keep going. Gotta keep pushing forward. Uh, as as always, you know, from previous videos. Still shitting on kids and Pokemon tonight, you know. Take that kid. Crushing dude. dreams. Yeah, crushing dreams with Pokemon, you know. I mean, got to become a master, remember? Yep. You know. One of those kids Other, that other than that, other than that you know, tried out, I tried out the Back for Blood, you know, beta. Mm-hmm. It was, was good, you know. I, yeah. Actually, with you guys, you know. Yes. Then. uh What up? Shout, shout out to Petey. Yeah. Uh, dude, Petey, Petey was a bro. Like, Petey. If, if Petey ever <laughs> sees this, Petey, you were, you were a bro. Like I, I, we'll try to find Petey. And Petey bring was him a on real show, one, for real. Oh yeah. And then as far as read, like I'm not gonna lie, I haven't been doing too much reading or anything. Uh, my my glorious manga number one came back this week. though. bleach, you know, with a big oh. 75 page one shot. Nice. So nice. If you guys you go in the game? fans, yeah, go go check that out. But yeah, that's about it. You know, just 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 ruining kids' dreams in Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and you know get the final fantasy train yeah, going we, you know we do what we do we do what we do fuck yeah. them kids yeah they deserve it. <laughs> <He's cool. laughs> yes indeed uh as for me um i have been playing well if you're not watching me on twitch.tv slash madness ad shame on you um i've been playing um the ratchet and clank uh rift apart amazing game truly a true ps5 game um i went back since i finished miles morales on twitch i went back to the where it all started and i've been playing a uh, marvel spider-man that came out on the ps4 back in i think 2018 so just kind of reacclimating myself to swinging through the uh love lovely manhattan and um back for freaking blood played with my buds here and shout out to Petey. 
who was kicking ass with us. You know, he was our Leroy Jenkins. He like I said, call, Petey, on Petey, was a, Petey was a bro, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, Petey, 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 like Chris said, Petey was quiet at first, but then it, Petey came oh, yeah. shell became our bro. You know? <laughs> and um, if you if you haven't watched it on Twitch, I will be posting it here on YouTube. So you will be able to see the fun we had from our um, run through. We didn't finish it because somebody had to watch the Saints <laughs> and we, we couldn't finish the love. But it was such a great time. Um, still trying to figure if I'm going to actually purchase it. Got to see what the perks are. And great game. Great game. Great party game with friends. That's for sure. Um, as for watching, uh, I've finished the trilogy of Transformers War for Cybertron. I, I finished Kingdom. Actually enjoyable. Somebody big is coming and I hope they have another story to it because I think we're going to get a recreation of Transformers the movie. Um, Unicron. Yes. Although the voice for Unicron in this wasn't as menacing. Speaking of the movie, we have the 35th anniversary, anniversary. Yep. in the theaters. Blu-ray, everything and theaters. Yes. And yeah. theaters. 86. What a great year. Huh? Yeah. We, we were all screwed as children. <laughs> I was nine years old crying in the theater. Why y'all took him away, Lord? You know, Mahalia Jackson's Precious Lord, Take My Hand came on. And then it was mixed in with the upper room because Optimus died. Spoiler. And, you <laughs> <Both> know, <laughs> but. I really, I do recommend, man, if you're a Transformers fan, definitely check out War for Cybertron on, um, you know, the big streaming service. Um, also, Gunpowder Milkshake, I cannot get enough of that damn movie. I highly recommend that. And I started watching uh, Brand New Cherry Flavor. Weird, weird <laughs> movie. No, excuse me. Weird limited series on Netflix. Well, I just gave it the name, but yes, it's on Netflix. Um Damn it, the big streamer. The big streamer. <laughs> all I can say is this woman throws up cats. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That is it. Go check it out. Um, as for reading, I am still on the um, Milestones Returns um, run. Uh, I just finished. It took me a while. I'm so behind. Um, I just finished reading um, Icon and Rocket issue one. I need to hit the comic book store um, hard and fast and get um, Hardwire issue one came out um, this past week. Freaking Immortal Hulk is coming to an end, but I don't think we're going to get issue 50 until next month. So I'm kind of waiting with bated breath for that because it's supposed to be this really big um, 80 page issue. Um, issue. So I'm, I'm really stoked for that. And I think, yeah, that's all I've been reading. I'm going to get back into my book, book reading, my actual novels reading sooner or later. And once I get that done, huh, hallelujah, I'll make some recommendations. But most definitely check out um, <laughs> brand new cherry flavor because holy shit, she threw up a cat, y'all. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Blah, cat. And I love how they said, and that bitch threw up a cat. And I'm like, yeah, we all saw. So give your brains a watch with that one. And it, it um, Catherine Kenner, I love her. Anything she's in, I'm watching it. She's in it. So it was a definite watch. All right. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. You have survived episode 12 of the Geek Table Talk. Uh, the episode we have called the Sua Corporation Squad. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you know our little, my little shtick. Want to thank you. Thank you for watching, putting up with our geekiness, putting up with our love for what we were talking about. Matter of fact, just putting up with my talking ass. I definitely want to thank you all for that. 500 strong. We are on the road to 1,000. We are not stopping until we hit 1,000. Okay, baby. You. 1,000 and 4,000 views. And once we get there, then we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers because we can do it. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, hit that red subscribe button. Only takes a second. Blue thumbs up. Blue thumbs are always cool and it helps with the algorithm. And hit the bell. Turn your notifications to all so you'll be notified when a new episode comes out. Also, I know I never said share. 
share with your friends. Let them know we exist. Tell them about our, these three rugged, handsome young geeks who talk about things that most folks, they say they don't care about, but they do. I like that Marvel. I love that man in the iron suit. Oh, he's Tell a me more. He's attractive. <laughs> that Idris, that pointy head <laughs> makes me wetter than bald okra. Let's make it happen. Um, go ahead and share, man, because sharing is caring and sharing lets folks know that we exist. If you do want to sponsor us, and like I said, we are sponsored by absolutely no one because it keeps us honest. Trust me, money can change views real quick. <laughs> go ahead and get at me at heyyoant77 at gmail.com. As a matter of fact, if you look at the bottom of your screen, all that contact info is right there for you. Catch me on Twitch. That's where I am now most of the time. Twitch.tv slash madness three. Excuse me, madness A D. Cause I keep I'm madness everywhere, but it's either three zero, three zero, or A D. <laughs> he's he's the mad lad. <laughs> I'm just I'm just a mad folk. Um, Twitter and Instagram, madness3030, because I'm a Deltron 3030 fan, but I can't rap for shit. So catch me there. Catch my friends, Chris McNabb, wherever Chris McNabb is sold. Catch David Welty at all your favorite stores, mostly liquor stores. He is there. Oh, mad me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And before we go, I used to say this on um, This Week in Geek. Ladies and gentlemen, I know we're in this um, broken Panasonic tape deck, but make sure you shop local and shop often. Help these local, um, help local stores in your neighborhood or in your communities thrive and survive because they will, in turn, also help the community thrive and survive. Trust me on this. It's an experiment that actually works. So, hmm, anything else you guys want to say before we say goodbye? Nope. I'm happy with the usual ending. Here we uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Make sure, please, you know the drill. Wash your hands, wash your feet, definitely wash your ass, wear a damn mask, get vaccinated. If you're afraid of the vaccine, just continue to wear your mask. We're going to get through this. I have a strong feeling. I know I'm being an optimist, but I'm also a realist. We are going to get through this together, and that's the only way it's going to happen. So until next time, Stay geeky. <laughs>